power that states can have in controlling their citizens, knowing exactly where they are at any given time, what they are doing, who they are associating with, and what they can do with that technology from a, almost an Orwellian point of view is really, I think, where the, the darkness of our future lies if we don't control this technology now. Artificial intelligence technology is fundamentally transforming economies and societies around the world. There are many upsides to AI, including increases in productivity. But what are some of the downsides and the risks? Well, joining me to discuss is Johan Stein. He is the chair of the practice group on AI and robotics at the Institute for IT Professionals of South Africa. Johan Stein, welcome to the Center for Risk Analysts. David, thanks for having me. I'm a huge fan. I watch all the videos you produce, so uh, it's a great honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you on. So before we delve into this topic of AI, some people might not be familiar with artificial intelligence technology. Uh, what are some of the trends that we're seeing uh, in this space, and what is the impact that it's having on economies and societies? Good question, because there's so much confusion about AI. I find it quite easy when I speak with my colleagues or other people working in the tech. But I mean, the other day, my dad asked me, what is this AI stuff? And I just struggled to explain it to him. But essentially what it is, it's, it's computer algorithms mimicking human intelligence. So if you think of um, optical character recognition or computer vision that can see documents, we talk about machine learning, recognizing patterns, we talk about the Internet of Things, and it's a lot of these um, and robotic process automation, a lot of these technologies are busy converging more and more. The big question is obviously around what happens to our future jobs, but there are a lot of benefits, so healthcare benefits, education benefits, where it can assist the doctors to much quicker through image recognition, diagnose diseases and things like that. So it's essentially the ability for computers in this modern age to do a lot of the tasks that we as humans do quicker, better, more accurate. They don't strike or go on leave or join unions. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. Okay, great. So that's the upside. But what about the downside, Johan? Because particularly in China, you've mentioned the image recognition software and that's being used by the communist party of china to identify citizens to track their behavior and also to inform their social credit score system uh, which is used to kind of punish dissent and so on uh, so yeah. what are some of the longer term risks that we're going to be seeing uh, with how this technology is used particularly by governments yeah, look, I'm an optimist about this technology, but we should not be blinded to the powerful possible negative impact it can have on our world. And with all technological revolutions, it's always that double sided sword, we can really do good for the future of our children. But we more than ever, we have incredible power if we think of the kind of data that Google and Facebook and others have on us, your mobile phone network, for instance, who knows exactly where you are at any given time of the day, what kind of applications you access. So from a behavioral point of view, there's so much more data available on us as individuals. We're going to get to a point this year where Elon Musk and his company Neuralink will implant a device into a human brain for the first time. Huge health benefits around Alzheimer's and the like, but now imagine that device can not only read my thoughts, but also influence my thoughts. So imagine the future of democracy. You know, so facial recognition is a huge problem, as you've mentioned in China. I mean, in the last year or two, we saw in the US where a lot of your, your big firms like IBM and others started rolling back on this technology because facial recognition struggles to recognize female faces and people of darker skin tones. So we've seen a lot of false arrests and the like. So it can also be of great benefit, but the, the power that states can have in controlling their citizens, knowing exactly where they are at any given time, what they are doing, who they are associating with, and what they can do with that technology from a, almost an Orwellian point of view is really, I think, where the, the darkness of our future lies if we don't control this technology now. So, Johan, this technology is very powerful. Is it possible to include and build in checks and balances to stop these technologies from being abused? Look, and I think there's, there's almost a larger ethical and philosophy conversation needed than the technology itself. If we look at human nature, if we think that, you know, the idea that power corrupts, 
And now we, through technology, give our rulers a lot more power over us than they've ever had before. We look at the social scoring in China that's most likely going to be uh, happening across the world in the near future, where I, the way I behave, and imagine again back to the thoughts, if I think badly of my rulers, not just um, verbally or through blogs I write, but just in the privacy of my own thoughts, and they punish me for that. So we have to regulate it. There's a lot more talk about responsible AI, especially in the business world. We, we think about privacy. We think about if somebody just lives on the wrong side of the track, but they have the exact same credit score as myself, the algorithm and the biases might not give that person the same kind of access to credit uh, or to healthcare for that matter. So unfortunately in South Africa, we don't have a lot of regulation. We do obviously have papia around privacy, but when it comes to the ethical use of our data in light of the smart technology era, there is very little in place at the moment. And that is a huge concern because who is policing the police? Who is watching the watchers when it comes to this technology? We should be a lot more vocal about this, speak about this more and exercise a lot more influence on government to get the right kind of regulations in place. So Johan, viewers of our channel will be familiar with the incapacity of the state in South Africa. Uh, we can barely keep the lights on. Uh, do you think that the South African government is uh, looking at this technology and you know, potentially seeing it uh, as a tool to be exploited or uh, are they just uh, woefully uh, ignorant of the yeah. potential of this technology? There was an article recently that says that 60 or 70 percent of government workers don't know how to use a computer. Um, I think that the um, the understanding of what this technology is is lacking. I mean, just over a year ago, we had the uh, Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution who produced their report. It was an amazing report, but nothing happened about it. So the question is, do we just wait for government or can we as civil society and as business work with government, which I think is the right model? I don't think government understands the potential benefit completely. Now, there are some people in government that I deal with, you know, like the CSIR, for instance, and others who are really doing some great work with drones, delivering medical supplies to rural areas and the like. Love to see more of that. But I don't think this so-called fourth IR that we have read about so much a while back is taken seriously and that is a great pity because the world is moving past us and we will lose even more of our competitive edge as an economy if we don't embrace this technology across business and across government yeah johan i spoke to somebody who attended that 4ir event that government hosted and he told me an anecdote which was that somebody put out their hand and said comrades when is the fourth industrial revolution going to be beginning um so i think that that but perhaps uh, highlighted uh, some of the perception problems uh, uh, with regards to uh, these new technologies from government. I think government's always yeah. uh, responding to or, or, or behind the curve when it comes to these trends. You're right, David. And also, you know, I sometimes say tongue in cheek, we're still struggling with the second industrial revolution when it comes to electricity supply, uh, when it comes to connectivity. So, you know, if the, if the children in the dusty streets of South Africa don't have a proper water supply electricity we talk about this digital divide so really to transform our society there's a lot more fundamental things that need to be fixed but we can't wait for the fourth industrial revolution i think we have to do it in conjunction the tools are there it's becoming a lot more cheaper it can be a lot more accessible to people all across our country and in every economical sphere but i do think a lot more urgency needs to happen in order to get this right Johan Stein, thank you very much for joining us on the CRA. Let's hand over to you, our viewers. Do you think that AI represents a risk to democracy? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more analysis from the CRA team. And if you would like to become a client of the CRA, there's a link in the description below where you can find out more. We have a range of reports, weekly risk alerts, and online webinars exclusively for our clients. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.